My wife and I met the summer of 2004, and we wanted to come on here today and share with you guys um, the experience that we've had together since yeah. we've met each other and how we've grown in the Lord, and, and hoping this testimony that we come on here and share uh, will somehow um, help some of you guys out there. Um, when we met in the summer of 2004, um, I was a, a lukewarm hypocrite. I had, I thought I was a Christian. Um, I even tried to preach at my wife. I always had Christian music blaring. Uh, I was actually her neighbor. She lived behind me, and I'd be out cleaning my my truck and blaring the Christian music. At the time, I was uh, a manager manager for a for a gospel hip hop artist. Um, was helping him with his uh, with his career, and and I thought I was this big Christian, even though I was still sinning. I was still smoking weed, I was still uh, drinking beer, um, I was still living in all these sins, but I thought that I was a Christian because I believed. I was caught up in the um, once saved, always saved, eternal security doctrine. I didn't even know that I was a believer of that doctrine, but I was just deceived, believing that as long as I uh, said that I believed in Jesus, that I was okay. And um, then I met my wife, and... Uh, I was single, working... Uh, taking care of my children. I was a very independent woman. I had a lot of bitterness, a lot of hate in me. Uh, I had a rough life. I had a rough marriage before. Uh, but I realize now that the Lord let me go through all them things to make me strong, to let mm -hmm. me learn from the things that I went through. So I know that that's the reason why I had to go down that road. But in the time that me and my husband started, me and my husband started dating and seeing each other, um, he would preach at me and tell me all these things. But I knew that you cannot play around with God. I knew either you're for Him or you are against Him. There is no in between. There is no half stepping when you serve the Lord. And he would preach at me, and I used to think, well, he's going to die and go to hell if he doesn't repent because he's not even saved. But I would keep all these things to myself because I, I just thought that maybe he would wake up. And then we moved in together. Uh, we got our own place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll let you I didn't, know. Yeah, I, just, I didn't have the fear of God in me. I, I, was, uh, I didn't even realize that I was a mocker and a scoffer, even though I, I, uh, you know, I, I knew the Bible pretty good and, um, you know, would hang out with what I thought were Christian people <laughs> when really they weren't at all. Uh, they were just a bunch of mockers and scoffers that were living like ch children of the devil. Just, um, But I was just uh, believing that, you know, I could live however I wanted to and put Jesus' name with it and say it was okay. Um, but yeah, we uh, dated for a little while and we decided to move in together. Um, and we actually started going to... Uh, to church to get we actually started going to a church together um we we uh we moved a couple blocks down the street i moved i, I lived by myself and then she was my neighbor and lived by herself but we moved in together we a uh, couple couple blocks away yeah. and um you know after we decided to go to church um we decided to get married we were going to get married um in the summer um but we felt conviction we built the conviction of the Lord to go ahead and move the marriage up to the winter time so we moved it up what February in February, February instead of the summer we started going um, to church and uh, you know we thought we was living right but still we was hypocrites uh, I know that in my heart I truly love Jesus and I truly wanted to serve him but I didn't know the true way um, but in this time I was still smoking I was still backbiting, gossiping, talking about people. I would even gossip with the preacher. And in this time, I thought I was saved. But I truly wasn't saved. Uh, I had issues. I had anger issues. Uh, I still had a little bit of hatred, a little bit of bitterness in me because of the life that I had walked down. And truthfully, I was never set free from all my addictions and and I wasn't new. I wasn't brand new. I could still watch my TV. I would still watch, uh, you know, Murray and, and, you know, and all of them, Jerry Springer. 
horror movies. Horror movies. Love, I love horror movies. scary movies. Uh, and I and I still wasn't set free from all these things. But see, it's just time. I thought I was saved. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to let my husband tell right. a little bit about himself, and then we'll go on to the right. part of how we truly got renewed. Yeah. So, yeah. Neither one of us at the time when we first started going to church and committed our life to the church and became members of this church. Mm -hmm. um, Neither one of us were born again. Um, we were just going through the traditions, yeah, tradition. going through the motions of the church, and um, you know, and we didn't get re rebuked or corrected really by the church, except you need to get married. You know, it wasn't like you know, turn from your sin or anything. And you got to be dedicated. Yeah, to it was just all about tithes, you. All of, yeah, and, all and about paying. Church. Yeah, all about paying your tithes at church. All about. Your church attendance. Yes. All about being at church on time. Can't even be late. Can't don't be late, or you're going to be made fun of. Um, but in front it was of the it whole was nothing in front of the you know church. But um, it was nothing about holiness. It was nothing about no. uh, obedience to Jesus. It was nothing about you know uh, repentance and turning from your sin. It was all about um, you know what can you do for the church mm -hmm. and you know make sure you're here. Um, you know. It, it, you know, both of us were living powerless, defeated lives, even yes. though we, even though we thought we were doing right. Um, you know, I still was drinking, not, not that much, but I was still drinking. I was still gambling, mm -hmm. uh, still holding on to perversion. Uh, you know, still, uh, you know, just had little things uh, that I, my pet sins that I didn't want to give up. Um, like I said, neither one of us uh, were born again. My wife and I were living as hypocrites, and we didn't even know it. Uh, but during this time. Uh, several months before uh, we moved to a new house, the Lord spoke to my wife when she was upstairs alone. He said, you're going to have one more child, and it's going to be a girl. Um, later on, my wife told me about this uh, before we were married. We actually got married in fe February, and then we moved into this new house. And we wanted a new start, a fresh beginning. Mm -hmm. And about six weeks um, after we moved, uh, my wife got pregnant with little Mary. Um, and during this uh, pregnancy, uh, my wife uh, had some complications. They were they were worried about the baby. Yeah. Um, They're saying that our blood didn't match, yeah. and, and the baby would uh, may have to have blood transfusion through my stomach. And mm -hmm. I had told the doctors. I said the Lord told me I was going to have a child, and I know that. There's nothing wrong. God would yeah. not give me this child and then have to go through all them things. That's right. And we went anyways for the testing, but when they done the testing... They had to stick this long needle into your belly. Yeah. Right? This long needle. I can't remember the name of the procedure, but they had to stick this... Take which blood out. 13 weeks? I'm not really sure. She was only three or four months pregnant, though, wasn't she? I was about five, because you could do that test. Okay. Five okay, maybe it was around five months. They had to stick this long needle under your belly. Yeah. And when they do that, they find out the sex of the baby. And the late, it was a lady, right? Yeah. Lady no, came... It was a guy. Oh, it was a guy? Yeah. What did he say? He said, do you want to know the gender of the baby? And I said, no, I already know. I said, it's a girl, because the Lord told me. And he looked at me real funny, and he thought I was crazy. But, and then... He come back and he said, "Well, you know, it is a girl." That's what I told you. Amen. So yes. So, but yes, the Lord, the Lord did, does not lie, and He no, did not he lie. Not. He she not was a girl, lie. and we knew, we knew uh, already. Um, and I was, I, you know, I had to eat my words because I was, I had, to, I have to admit that I was, I, I had unbelief and I had doubt, and I believed it was going to be a boy. And I, I doubted whether or not the Lord spoke to my wife because I myself. Uh, was very lukewarm at the time, and the church that we were going to at the time that we were members of, um, you know, they began to uh, turn their back on us uh, shortly after this because when my wife had the baby, um, she did have a lot of complications. We were in and out of the hospital because she was she was bleeding a lot and having complications and everything, mm -hmm. and um, we were self-employed at the time, so uh, money was running dry, you know, mm -hmm. because we weren't getting to work as much, and um, Betsy couldn't work, she was very sick, and um, I believe doc, one of the doctors said, suggested um, a hysterect partial hysterectomy, right? Yeah. yeah, so my wife needed a partial hysterectomy, and we brought this before the people at the church, and one of the ladies there prophesied that if you have this surgery, you're going to bleed to death. Yeah, that's what she told me, she told me God told her 
if I had that surgery, that I would bleed to death. Right. And I had told them, well, that wasn't what God told me. God told me, he said, you're... He said, not many more days. Yeah, he said, not many more days, my child, will you suffer. Yeah. And the very next day, the doctor had called me because I had to wait like eight weeks before they could even do surgery. So I had to suffer in this time. But the doctor had called me, I think, three weeks early before the surgery Mm -hmm. and had told me that she had talked to the hospital and they're going to go ahead and let her do my surgery the next day at 6 o'clock in the morning. But the Lord had talked to me the day before and told me, not many more days, my child, will you suffer. Yes. And in this time, I had called my pastor and I had asked her if she's going to be there with me. And in this, this time, she said, I don't know. I will have to pray about it. And I said, okay. So we got off the phone. And I kept trying to call her and call her. And she kept avoiding my phone calls. Mm-hmm. So and I was even telling my husband how upset I was. And I told my husband I feel all alone. You know, I, I felt alone. I didn't have nobody. Uh, but in that time that I was sick, uh, I was crying out to Jesus this whole time on my sick bed. Mm-hmm. My husband was lukewarm, half stepping. Mm-hmm. I knew that he was because as I started crying out to God, he started coming to me and speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And he started making me and breaking me and molding me on my sick bed. I couldn't eat the whole time that I was on my sick bed. I would eat little dinners here and there, you know, just little, a little bit here and there. I lost so much weight. But I didn't know in this time that God was feeding me manna from above. And I do believe when God tells you that you live by his words is the truth. Because I don't see how in the world that I made it not eating. But God was there for me. And in this time that I cried out to him, he came to me, started speaking to me. Telling me, I have chosen you. You must tell the world. You must warn them that I am coming. My judgment is coming. And I'm coming. And I had no clue at this time what the Lord was speaking to me about because I did not know that we were living in the end times. I was brought up traditions of men, and mm-hmm. they don't preach on the end times. They don't preach on repentance. They don't preach on none of these things. So I didn't know. But mm-hmm. the things that the Lord would reveal to me would come to pass. Mm-hmm. And the Lord would speak to me, and my husband would always pound me with the Bible. It says, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. I said, well, the Lord's telling me this. Mm-hmm. The Lord's telling me that. And what the Lord would tell me would come to pass. And, and, and in this time, I started speaking, speaking in tongues. Uh, I started speaking words that Jesus would speak through me and telling me all mm-hmm. these things that I had no clue what the Lord was talking about. Mm-hmm. But the Lord is true and faithful. But he woke me up, and, and, and in this time, he let me see all my sins. Mm-hmm. I was so ashamed of myself. Mm-hmm. He had showed me backbiters, busybodies, he called them busybodies, backbiters, you know, going house to house, rumor, tell, tell barriers, you know, gossiping. He told me them people will have their part in a lake of fire. Because mm-hmm. I used to be a bad backbiter and a bad hypocrite, you know, just, just backbiting. Mm-hmm. He showed me that some things will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And he had showed me when I smoked my cigarettes how it defiled my body. I was defiling my body. And that's why he could not come into me. That's why he could not come into me because my right. body was dirty. And I had to want, want him. I had yeah. to go seek him. And then when, then when he showed me all these things, he broke me and molded me. And he came inside of me. Purified. And he purified me. I mean, I was so new. I, I couldn't watch television. I, I, I quit my cigarettes. It's like everything was brand new. Brand new. I was a new woman. Amen. God set me free. I cried all the time. I humbled myself before the Lord. I would cry. And, and he would just show me these things. He would speak to me. Mm-hmm. And there is one thing that he told me. He said, trust no one but me, my child. For mm-hmm. you know I do not lie. Amen. And God is true and faithful. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I was... You know, at the time, I was very, I didn't i didn't know it at the time, but uh, looking back, I know that I was very jealous and envious of my wife. You know, I was still holding on to sin, and, um, you know, and to see her, I didn't realize uh, what was going on. But now I know that, 
she was she had found Jesus. She was hearing his voice. Uh, she didn't have what I had. I had the traditions. I had the uh, following after uh, you know the traditions of men and what they do. And I had my Bible, and I thought that you know just because I could read in the Bible or I knew what the scripture said or I can I can memorize scriptures or rattle off scriptures and she couldn't that meant that I knew God better than she was but she was truly uh, being molded into a, a daughter of God um, I just had the Bible knowledge I just had uh, secondhand information from other people but she was truly having a, a revelation of Jesus she was getting to know Jesus on her sick bed. After she got off her sick bed, we still hopped around to a few different churches. Um, throughout these churches, we found greed and envy and strife, confusion, sin and witchcraft and all these different wicked things. I didn't know at the time. I mean, I was believing that some of these churches were good, but uh, because my wife had actually knew Jesus, she was discerning all of these wickedness. Now, one in particular was talking about uh, gathering money to what's been 50,000 or how much on a uh, parking 40, lot? 49, 40. They need almost 50,000 for their parking lot and they were collecting all this money and and then there was other churches that um, you know there was just jealousy just felt all these different things jealousy and confusion and envy strife and greed and then the final church that we went to there was witchcraft in that church. I was actually I believe I was under a spell in that last church that we went under because I'm not I'm not a violent person. I don't I'm not one to lay my hands on anybody, especially a woman. Uh, but when my wife said that um, she didn't want to go back to that church and she wasn't going back anymore, I actually about choked my wife. I pulled the car over and was about to choke her. And I don't even realize I was doing that. I must have had, I'm sure I had demons on me. Oh, yeah. um, but you the know, place yeah, the place was full of, of demons. But um, we decided to come up out of the church at this time, right? Yeah, the Lord had let me know that the churches of today are not as him. And the churches that we went to was full of demons. They were not of God. They didn't preach on holiness and righteousness. And mm -hmm. The last church that we attended to, uh, we went in there that night, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me, do not let no one lay hands on you. And I didn't know that it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. But as we go in, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around, and I could just feel that this is not of God, this is not right. And they all started praying, you know, they done the preaching, and then they started praying. Well, the lady that runs the place is a friend of my mother's. She mm -hmm. said, Betsy, come up here, let us pray for you. And at first, I kind of got scared, but when I stood up, I got weak in my spirit. I felt like I was just going to pass out. Mm -hmm. But my husband went up there, too, mm -hmm. and we got prayed for she prayed for me, and then this preacher come over and laid his hands on top of us and was praying. Mm -hmm. And you know how you're bent over, you're praying. Well, I opened up my eyes. When I opened up my eye, and my left eye over here, there was a demon's eyeball right in front of my eye. And I could not believe what I had seen. And I hurried up and I closed my eye because mm -hmm. I never experienced anything like that before. It scared me. Like a snake's eyeball. Wasn't yeah, it was like a snake's eyeball. And like reptilian or, yes. or something. And it was just as real as real could be. I knew then that I would never go back. We left that night and I was so quiet and my husband was like, What's wrong with you? I said, You will not believe what I'd seen in there. Mm -hmm. There was a, 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 a snake's eye in, in my eyeball and I said it was a demon's eye and I just couldn't believe it. But the Lord had spoke to me beforehand, the things that I will reveal to you will scare you. You will be scared, but do not be fearful or scared what I show you and reveal to you. So that's the only reason why that I never got scared is because the Lord had spoke to me on my sickbed. So that's what, you know, helped me. Amen. And through the conduct and, you know, example that my wife showed me, even though I was very hard-headed and stiff-necked and proud and uh, you know, I saw my wife having this real relationship with Jesus, spending time with Jesus, crying out to Jesus, going in her room and just uh, listening for Jesus. Um, you know, I began to get hungry. I began, I began to see that, you know, I have nothing but a fake relationship. My, my relationship is, is nothing with Jesus. All I have is dead religion. So I saw my wife in this real relationship with Jesus. And I began to, to want what she had. So I began to, to seek Jesus. I began to, to cry out to Him. Um, I began to go in the bathroom and get on my knees and 
I would hug the toilet bowl and, and just get as humble and low down as I could. I even lay on my face sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, I'd get serious about Jesus because all my life I, 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 I've known he was real and I wanted to, I wanted to know him. I, I loved him. I thought that I loved him. And, you know, I was called since I was a young child. And I've been through near-death experiences been through many traumatic things growing up in my life, uh, you know, seen murder, family murdered, I mean, all kinds of different horrible things to where, um, you know, I knew Jesus was real, and I knew that he answered prayer, and I knew that he was with me in my life, protecting me many times. Um, you know, I really felt his hand of mercy on my life. And so I wanted to know him for real. I wanted my own revelation. Um, so... Shortly after, not too long after we came out of church, as I began to seek the Lord and cry out to Him and, 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 and truly surrender my life to Him and turn away from my idols. I had so many idols. Sports was, sports was one of my biggest idols. Television, all those different things. When I began to lay down my idols, all the things that were separating me from God, all the things that were stealing my time and affections, when I began to lay those things down, then Jesus began to reveal himself to me. He filled me with his Holy Spirit. He gave me the gift of tongues uh, and just filled me uh, with himself. And my wife and I, have, the last two years, we've been on Internet now, mm -hmm. Facebook and YouTube. It's been two years now. And the Lord just continues to reveal himself to us and show us yeah. how narrow the way is. It's you know, he's narrow. began. he showed us that there is no room for self on the yeah. narrow way. There's no room for selfishness on the narrow way. There's yeah. no room for self-love. There's no room for uh, for me, myself, and I. There's no room for having it your way, my way. Uh, and when we do try to, when our self does get too involved, then he rebukes us and he and and, and shows us um, our sin. And and I just thank him for his Holy Spirit that convicts us of sin and shows us when we're heading down the wrong way. Because um, you know he's been merciful to us. Yes. Uh, he's been very loving to us. Um, even here, even here, not yes. too not too long ago, he showed us we that there was yeah road. we were getting off the narrow road. There was some self righteousness coming in. Yes. We were beginning to rely on our own strength, our own power. Yes. We were beginning uh, to look around to other people and pay more attention to what yes. other to what other people are saying and what other people are yes. doing. Uh, you know, we need to be focused on Jesus. Yes. And you know, I just thank him for his Holy Spirit because if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't have known that we were uh, getting off, off track. Yeah, we yeah. were getting off the road. Um, yeah. But you know, I know that you know once our hands to the plow, if we put our if we put our hands down, and if we if we give up now, we won't be worthy That's right. uh, in the end. And you know, and if our soul shrinks back, He will not be pleased with us. But one thing that I have definitely learned since I've met my wife, um, and I thank the Lord uh, that, that that He brought my wife into my life um, because. Uh, I was caught up in dead religion, and uh, the Lord has, has shown me uh, what the fear of God is. Um, you know, and without the fear of God, uh, you know, there's no way that we'll make it in this world. Uh, without the fear of God, you know, there's no wisdom, there's no understanding, there's no knowledge. Without the fear of God, um, you know, we'll, we're left to uh, relying on our own selves, relying on uh, doing things our own way. So I just thank the Lord that He showed me, uh, you know, that He is a loving God, um, but He's also a consuming fire, and we must fear God. We can't continue in sin and call ourselves Christians. You know, you know what is it? Three fourths of the world call themselves Christian. I used to be one of those people because I used to think I could live however I wanted uh, and call myself a Christian and keep sinning willfully, uh, but I know now. Um, as it says, and I think it's Hebrews 10.26, uh, for if we go on willfully sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but only a fearful expectation of the coming judgment. So, I know what holiness is now. I know what righteousness is now. I know what it is to be a Christian now. If you're a Christian, you're Christ-like. You're abiding in Christ. You're living like Christ because it's not you it's holy. It's not you that's righteousness. It's righteous. It's Him that's in you. You know, you're born again. And my wife's born again. I'm born again. And, you know, I just thank the Lord for, for, for helping us and saving us and delivering us from the bondage of this world. Yes, okay. And Yes, go ahead. Honey. I would like to say some things. Uh, but I, we wanted to share these things with you because, 
what the Lord took us through, we had to go through yeah. in order to be changed into new people. Uh, because we cannot be the same old and okay. think that we're saved because we're not. When Jesus comes into you, you will be new. You will be made new. Mm -hmm. And it will be him that leads and guides you and directs your path. You no longer lead and guide yourself because he is inside of you. He lets you know what is good and what is bad. He lets you know evil from good. And he lets you know all these things. Sometimes he will even let you fill people's hearts and the things that they're going through. Because it is him that lives inside of you. We ourselves can do nothing. We know nothing. We only know what the Holy Spirit tells us. But why we wanted to make this video, we wanted the world to know where we had come from and what God has done for us and what he can do for you. But you must want him. You must truly want him with your true heart. And if you truly want him, you go to him and seek him until you find him. And you must follow Jesus because the Lord spoke to me. He had told me, trust no one. Trust yes. no one but me. And yes. God means what he says, people. And we are to go and follow him. And only him. He is the only true way. I don't tell people to come and follow me and my husband. I'd be like, you better go follow Jesus because he's the only true way. Because we can't, we can't save you. The only thing we can do is tell you what we've been through, what we've seen, and what we've heard in our revelation of Jesus. But you yourself must go to him and have a personal relationship with him and get to know him for yourself. But Jesus has changed me. He has changed my husband. And he has showed us a while back here, a couple, few weeks ago, that we had got off the narrow road. And now it's time for us just to focus on him and do his will and do what he wants us to do. He said, do not worry about what other people think. Or what other people may say about you. It's what do I think about you. And that's what we all have to worry about. What does Jesus think about us? That's all that matters. Because the Lord spoke to me today. He said there will be no mercy. No mercy without true repentance of the heart. He said he means what he says. And he said there's many of his children that have fallen into pride. They have fallen into pride and they have taken their eyes off of him. They worry about what the people will think and what the people will, will say. If they stand up, hope, you know, for his holiness and righteousness. But he had told me that is a snare from the old devil. And many has fallen into that snare. So we must stand up and stand for his holiness and righteousness. Because God is coming back for holy people and those who stand for him. And I wanted to share these things with yeah. you. None of you watching this video, nor myself, nor my wife, have arrived in heaven yet. All of us have to endure until the very end to be saved. Each of us must every day wake up, deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow Jesus. Oh, and there's one more thing that I wanted to share with you. Uh, when the Lord spoke to me about Mary, I could not bear any more children. I could not have no children. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, I don't remember if I put that in there. No, we didn't. Well, yeah, we, we actually didn't share that. Oh, we didn't? No, we didn't yeah. share. That was, that's the, the, one of the biggest miracles. Not only did she hear the Lord's voice and he said that, but around 15, 14, 13, 14 years prior to that, uh, when we had Rodney, uh, they severed her uterus, so she wasn't even supposed to be able to have any more children. Um, but not only was it a miracle to hear his voice that she was going to have a girl, but she wasn't even supposed to be able to have any more children. Um, nothing is impossible Absolutely. with the Lord Jesus Christ. He has proved that again and again yes. in our lives. And and he's so true. Yes. No, he but he's so, so true. true. He's so faithful. And if he speaks to you yes. and you know that he speaks to you, let no devil in hell come and take what yes. God speaks to you because yes. he is out to kill and destroy. That's right. And he is, you know, he's a liar. He's a that's liar. Right. He's out to destroy you. That's right. And that's why we must keep our focus on Jesus. And Jesus right. means what he says. Don't look to the left and don't look to the right. We must look straight ahead. And, you know, we are out here in a war. It is a battle out there. And mm -hmm. it is spiritual warfare. And if you're not having spiritual warfare, you need to check yourself because Amen. it is real. It Amen. is real. And I wanted to share with you. Amen. Yes, and Jesus said, be a good cheer, though, because he's overcame it all. That's so if right. you are if you are truly abiding in Jesus Christ, if you're walking in holiness and righteousness yes. and obedience to Jesus every day of your life, then the devil's a defeated foe. As yes. long as you keep your hands clean, keep your feet clean, and live for Jesus and walk in the Spirit. Yes. We love you guys, yes. and we pray that the Lord Jesus blesses each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Jesus bless hey, you. Mama. Mary wants to say goodbye. Goodbye. Say, Jesus bless you. Jesus bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you all. Love you.